Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. We've got an interesting day today. Um, we are just off to Teen Nutrition this morning because they have got a visitor who is the big man, Martin Ford. Now, for those of you who haven't heard of Martin Ford, he is pretty much the face of 5% nutrition at the moment. And he is six foot, six, six, six foot giant. Like, yeah, he's, exactly. yeah, I don't even know his exact height, um, but he's, he's a massive, massive guy. And he is now the face of 5% nutrition since uh, Riz Piana sort of passed away. So today he will be at the Liverpool store from 12 till 1.30. He's going to be catching up with them. And then he will be in the Team Nutrition Birkenhead store from 4 to half 5. And in the meantime, I think we're going to go to dinner with him over in Chester or Chester Oaks for a nice big steak. So we hope we're going to catch up with them and then we may be training them later on as well. So today has been an interesting day. The other thing I forgot to mention is as well, the whole Team Nutrition, Liverpool and Birkenhead stores have been revamped and look unbelievable. So I just want to quickly show everyone how they are currently looking. So we're going to take a quick tour around the Liverpool store this morning as all the new signage has just literally gone up this week. Again, and we have just finished the first part of the day at the Liverpool store and we are now off for food steak at Miller and Carter Cheshire Oak so let's jump inside and grab some steak who is the face and heavily involved of 5% nutrition. Um, got a busy year this year involved in some other bits and bobs and moving into the big screen as well. But we'll kick first off with what fuels the big man in terms of daily food and take us a breakdown of what, oh, what daily what food. Yeah. Okay, well, at the moment I'm actually prepping some of my food. I'm eating like a, a bit of a girl, to be honest. Yeah, and there was a bit of a steak then as well. And, it was and I had salmon. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, at the moment I... Uh, Breakfast is egg whites, uh, three whole eggs, eight egg whites. I'll have 150 gram of oats with uh, two scoops of whey protein, mm -hmm. uh, just for the flavor more than anything yeah, for, yeah. for the morning one. Um, I'll have that probably, whoosh, about seven, seven o'clock in the morning. I'll have another meal around about nine, which will be, um, I'll have 50 gram dry weight of rice, mm -hmm. 250 gram white chicken breast and a serving of green veg. Mm -hmm. I'll then train probably about an hour after that. And that will take me up till lunchtime. Lunchtime will be exactly the same as pre-workout. So I'll have my uh, chicken, uh, rice and veg. Mm -hmm. And then I, at the moment I'm cutting carbs then after the post-training, 
Okay, so you mean you're holding back on carbs? Yeah, well, from from probably two o'clock, I hold back on carbs. So I'll have uh, salmon and veg, then I'll have chicken and veg, then I'll have another, uh, I'll either have egg whites um, with some salad and some avocado, Mm -hmm. or I'll have white fish or turkey. So I, I keep a very low fat, um, you were very clean night. then as well. Oh, very clean. Yeah, yeah I've yeah. always ate very clean. Um, and I'll I'll have the avocado with the last two meals. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of veg, lots of salad. And then every fourth day, I'll put a reload in. Okay. So I'll take my, my carbs on the low day, will be around about 150. And keep that all clean as well, even on the, re- on the refeed day? Well. Uh, yes and no. Mm-hmm. I'm going to confuse you. <laughs> <laughs> so... If I'm looking like a fat git, <laughs> my reload is clean. Yeah. Right. If I'm looking, uh, if I'm looking on point and track, I tend to put one meal in, which is uh, I'll probably have a cheat meal every two weeks. Yeah. And then that cheat meal, my coach wants me to have around about four and a half, five thousand calories in one meal, which is easy. It's, it's not that hard to do. Trust me. Once you once you start adding in the ice creams and the the, the pizza with a bit more cheese yeah. and, and, and the fatty meats and some some stuff like that. it's not it's not that hard to get that sort of volume in especially at my size no no I mean, I but what I'll do on the cheat day I'll also make that a high carb day mm-hmm. so throughout the day I'll I'll have a hundred gram of carb with every meal okay so I'm, I'm looking a at, bit more there. yeah it, it's it's a complete refuel mm-hmm. so if if I'm doing just a, a refuel day on clean food yeah I'll go up to six hundred gram of clean carb okay if I'm doing a refuel day and a cheat meal I'll do probably around 500 gram of clean carb and yeah. then plus a cheat meal on top. How did you first get into training and what keeps you motivated today to keep keep training? Uh, okay, I, I first got into training properly when I was probably 14. Mm-hmm. Um, I was always very good at sports. And then when I was 14, I got selected for a, a cricket academy, mm-hmm. Warwickshire, and I played for England as well. Um, and I remember going to the England Academy and thinking I was the dog's bollocks because yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm playing. Have you, have you always been a big kid then? I've been the, tall. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I was, I was big when I was when I was like uh, 13, 14, and I went to the academy, and I remember the coach going, "Yeah, you're right, but you're fat." <laughs> <I was laughs> just, like, just what you want to hear. Yeah. What? <laughs> but I wasn't even that fat. That's what's terrible. Like looking back, I was just chunky. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. fat. But obviously this was like England level academy. Yeah, so yeah, it's high standard. Yeah, I mean the coach was saying it a bit tongue in cheek, but he's like, you need to get into your fitness. And he had he had a fair point. I wasn't I wasn't training as hard as I should. I didn't really understand it at like 13, 14. I just played played the sport and, and that was it. So I remember signing up for my first uh, gym membership was at Living Well, which is Ballantine's now. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> Shame. Yeah, I've been trying to get to a real gym. Yeah. <laughs> and and it was it was all cardio based. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of it was a lot of uh, bikes interval on the treadmill that was cross trainers swimming, uh, and, and weight training was pretty much non-existent. To be honest, it was press ups, dips, body weight um, stuff. Body weight stuff. And, uh, apart from we used to do a lot of rowing mm-hmm. and pull downs, um, and apart from that, that was that was pretty much it. Like the, the leg section of it would be walking lunges and squat jumps. Yeah. So it was. It wasn't until I was twenty one. 2021 that I got into weight training and the reason I got into weight training was because I picked up a, an injury when I was 19 uh, to my groin. I was a fast bowler and I was playing on a wet pitch. My leg went that way and this one stayed there and yeah, it yeah. snapped. And I was I was basically forced to retire from, from the sport. Mm-hmm. So obviously uh, me being professional at that point, 19 year old kid, didn't really focus too much at school because I was going to be a professional cricket player to, yeah. to you know, one day being happy as Larry, the next day, dreams over. Really what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, I had like four or five months of a real hard time where I couldn't get my head around it. Um, lost a hell of a lot of weight. Probably went from 14, 15 stone to maybe 11, mm-hmm. which at six, seven, six, eight is a bad weight. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I looked, I looked terrible. And then like overnight, I remember thinking, oh, I've got to change this. I look like a right twat. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked terrible. <laughs> so... Uh, I, I just I signed up to a proper gym, yeah, like a like a man's gym, yeah, yeah, and uh, that was it. There was no looking back. I fell in love with weight training. I had no clue what I was doing. I used to do all over body workouts every day of the week. Come home and just eat, eat, eat. And I used to eat um, loads of toast, loads of bread, loads of f- fruit, because that was our and potatoes and pasta. That was our diet as a as, as a sports yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. were just told from a young age just to fuel up on carbs, oh, yeah, for energy, and 
it worked so well. I went from 11 stone to 20 stone in like six months on my life and, and it was, it, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. Uh, it was, there was no supplements involved. It was, no, I didn't know what supplements yeah, were. Yeah. I was a cricket player, yeah? So all I'd done was just eat so much carb and so much fruit. And obviously I had a very good motor because I was so fit from playing yeah, cricket. Yeah. My, my body just responded really well to that type of training and I, I think I was doing, I was probably doing anywhere between 10 and 20 repetitions at the time. And I'd, I'd go and I'd do chest, back, shoulders, chest, back, shoulders, like bro's like work. Every yeah. day, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, and if it was sore, I'd do a bit of legs, yeah. or I'd do a bit of arms, and there was no structure to it at all. And that was probably the best I've ever developed in, in an amount you were of time. Doing it when you first started training, don't you? you just get in, get stuff done, and everyone starts with that fuck me moment where you look in the mirror and like, shit. Yeah, <laughs> you, don't, you, like, don't, shit. you don't really need to, I think when you first start out, you just need to enjoy it. Yeah. And then once you you know you hit that level, you'll get results. If you never use the gym properly and you eat enough food and you go into a gym, you're gonna get results re- yeah, results yeah. regardless. But you will hit a point where you stop. Yeah. And well, that's when you need to try and educate yourself more and, and really start to understand. And I think for me that was oh, probably when I was 20, 26, 27, I really started to look a little bit deeper into the whole supplementation and, and, and how you train properly. Yeah, yeah. And, and it came a bit more of an important part of my life. Um, and I'm, I'm 35 now, and I'm still learning. Yeah, you, I, learn, you learn I mean, every you day. Ne- I mean, you never stop learning, do you? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, go on. and I think you touched on the most important part of my life, people is about enjoying it. I think so many people copy what other people are doing, yeah. and then fall out of love with it because they're trying to force themselves into something that they don't enjoy doing. If you're going and enjoying it the every day, you're going to give it 100%. If yeah. you're turning up at the gym going, fuck me, I can't be off being here. I, I think the biggest chore. problem with fitness nowadays is that there's so many amazing athletes out there that normal kids look at and aspire to be, and they're never going to achieve it. Do you know what I mean? You, you can. Everyone can look good, yeah, and everyone can look better than what they look, but not everyone can be that top one percent in the world. And and I think that's the biggest problem with with the industry is we sort of we make out like you can look however you want if you put the effort in. You can't, of course. Do you know what I mean? I know where my limitations are, and I know what. That's why I don't compete. There's no there's no way in a million years I'd win shit if I got on stage. However. I know if I get my physique looking a certain way, I can make a lot of money doing films. Yeah. And I've done 11 now, yeah? So I, I get where my niche is. Yeah, I understand yeah. where I need to get myself to physically to be able to justify the hours and the money I put into training. And that's the beauty of social media as well, isn't it? Mm-hmm. If, you've got, if you've got that kind of uh, characteristics and you're charismatic, you enjoy what you're doing, you're passionate and you're helping other people, then you're gonna go further than if you're just an athlete. So yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, you know, this the, I've got, uh, Dean with me downstairs, who's won the British four times, probably one of the best bodies in the UK. No one knows him no. because he's the most boring git you'll ever meet. Dean, you're boring. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's like when you go to the Expos now. Like we went to the Arnold last year, and like um, Philly was there, and Dexter Jackson was there, and the queues were like minimal. And you go over to like some of the big YouTubers, and the, the queues are like round, yeah, yeah, round yeah, the blocks, yeah. and that's like. What is massive in the fitness industry now is YouTubers, vloggers, yeah. people have got a, a bit of character behind them as well and are passionate about what they're doing and they're helping other people I, at the same time rather than just being a, a, a figure of excellence. Yeah. So I mean, I, I think that's a good thing and I think it's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's a, it's a good thing because people can see normal people and be inspired, which is great. And it's giving, it's giving people a level where oh, I can achieve that and I can have a laugh. That's yeah. great. The reason I think it's bad is because you've got the best athletes in the world and no one cares. So there's, there's got to be a happy medium, medium where yeah. you can, we as an industry need to really figure out how to, if the industry wants to grow on that sector, how to really sort of bring these people to limelight mm. and, and, and make them, I suppose, more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there needs to be, like for me, I'll go to a bodybuilding show and I look at a bodybuilder and I'm like, wow, yeah. they're incredible. I look at him for 30 seconds there you go. and I'm done. I don't want to look at him anymore. <laughs> I, and that, that for yeah. me is where the sort of sport, unless you are passionate and you love it and you want to watch every single quarter turn and you want to see that and you want to see this, it's going to really have to figure a way forward yeah. to, to grow. But that's why those YouTubers and like people like yourself bring other people from outside of fitness street into it because you can see someone that they can relate to as well and yeah. they fall in love with it. So I think it's, I think it's great for the, the sport and it's great for the industry as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, the more 
influencers you can get that lo love training mm -hmm. and also not only love training but use training to do something it can only be better for the industry in, in the whole i also know that from your instagram you are uh, a dad as well and um, how has that kind of changed your life and what how your your ethos has changed and how you are, you are as a person um being a dad was really weird like the first i've got two daughters the first one i had imogen five years back i, was, I remember sitting there in the, in the hospital room and he's like wow you got a girl Wow, I well, probably wasn't like that. I probably like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this is cool. And then after about an hour, I was like, oh, I gotta go and eat now. Yeah. I'm looking around like, the fuck do I give this to? <laughs> and my missus has been rushed down to have a placenta out, and uh, because she was gonna breastfeed, I couldn't feed. Uh, I couldn't feed her, so she was crying. And I was like, what the fuck are they doing this? <laughs> and, and for me, that that was the moment it sort of really changed. And I, and I was like, okay, my life isn't priority anymore and ever since that that stage I, I i i still do what i need to do yeah but there's always them in the back of my mind and yeah, that's yeah. that's my energy now you know it's like you put things into perspective and there's been so much crap happen over the last 12 18 months in, in all areas of, of life and when you have children you realize what really is important and what's yeah. just you should just let whoosh and it, and it, it definitely turns you from a, a, a boy into a man yeah um, in so many ways and until you have children I don't think you quite appreciate what that what that is and then there's a nice thing to see from especially your page I've followed you for a while and when you get that element to it as well it's nice to see that like you've got that side which is a little bit outside the hard exterior of what yeah. you're you're obviously painting that as well and it's I think it's a good thing because it lets a lot of people in yeah to what I mean do you know I don't care how big or how ugly you are you know when you got your children in front of you there's just you don't that's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's your that's your whole world. Mm. Um, and people are always they'll look at someone and they'll they'll make an opinion. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, that opinion is completely wrong yeah. until they get to know that person. Of course. So I'm sure there's also a lot of perks to being a giant. But what is one of the daily struggles that you face from being being so big and so tall? Um, <laughs> I bang my head. <laughs> Every, <laughs> All oh, my life, even in my own house, I bang my head on the roof uh, of the doors, and that's that's the worst one. Um, Aeroplanes, I do a lot of travelling. Even though we get to fly in nice chairs yeah. and up the top, you you know if you're doing a 10, 12 hour flight and you try to get to sleep and you can't get your elbows down <laughs> because the, the seats are too narrow, that yeah, they're, they're, they're so made for me and more. Yeah, like that, the height sometimes yeah. is in the problem. It's when you put the height and the width in, yeah. it's just it doesn't work. Um, so yeah, I'd imagine, uh, I'd say for myself, the, the most irritable thing is the smacking of your head and um, not being able to fit in chairs properly. Okay, cheers that one. That's, uh, Thank you bottom. very much, buddy. Lastly, what size are these? Uh, you're a 12. 12. <laughs> 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 wow. Please do that, mate. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Let's go. I got this, I'm in it I'm held up guilty, so I got this, I'm winning I'm not a quitter, so I'm not fucking quitting Just try to stop me and you'll drop dead missing I'm on my way to the top now, listen I ain't never gonna stop too driven